Hey guys, welcome. Derek Schwimm with Kelly Williams Consultants Realty here with your Marysville, Ohio housing update for the month of December 22. Uh, kind of a recap of last year and what's going to go on, uh, at least in my opinion, here in 23. Stats, facts about those numbers, uh, and then some opinions of what that might be here to come. So, I'd like to cover competition, uh, finances, how much does it take to buy a house, and what can you get if you're going to sell yours. Uh, and then lastly, kind of what's the time involved? What's the month of inventory we're at? All that kind of stuff. So the first bit we're going to go over is competition. Um, we have a bit of a shift, especially if you look over year to year um, in those numbers. So currently uh, for the month of December, anyway, we had 20 new listings come on the market. 30 were the average number of listings on the market. Uh, 23 pending on any given point was the average and 23 uh, as well sold in the month of December. So numbers down a little bit. So year over year, uh, new listings up 33%. So more coming on the market, 58% uh, more listings on the market at any given point, 47% fewer houses in contract and 54% fewer houses selling. Um, so more on the market, less coming off of the market. So the biggest shift that we'll get to here in a little bit, uh, absorption rate, how many houses are selling versus how many are on the market, a balanced market. Anybody know what that is from previous videos? Six months of inventory is a balanced market. More than that is a buyer's market. We have been in a seller's market for a long time. Um, last year, I didn't look at the exact number, but last year at this time we were probably at 0.4 of a month of inventory and um, for the month of December it was 1.3 of a month. Average asking price for a house went up 19% from last year so people are still continuing to try to get more um, and the average sold price stayed at the same sold price of what people are actually getting for their houses um, from last year to this year is about the same. So. On average, uh, the asking price is $429,000 and the closed, uh, actually what you are getting for your house on average, excuse me, is $345,000. So a little bit of a discrepancy there. Um, and if you look at list price to sales price ratio, we call it um, from what a price or what a property is listed at versus what it actually closes for. So if it's listed for 400,000 and closed for 350, uh, what's the difference in there on average? Um, and for the month of December, 98%. So things were closing 2% lower on average than people were asking for them. We were at about 2% above that um, back when I was in a good habit of actually doing these videos. Um, so we've, we've seen a decline in, in that. So some telling uh, numbers coming through here. Um, so last topic or last category I like to focus on is how long is it going to take? And like I said, that absorption rate is the biggest change year over year. Um, like I said, we're at 1.3 month months, never know how to say that correctly of inventory. So, um, basically that comes down to, um, for December, there were 30 houses on the market. Um, and 23 of them sold. So 23 of the 30 would sell if nothing else came in the market and then it would take a remaining three tenths of a month to sell out the inventory that used to be about a half a month um so that changed 237 percent from last year so that's the biggest change and days on market i skipped over that one excuse me um is now at 20. that's 100 percent increase from what it was last year last year it was about 10 percent um or excuse me not 10 percent 10 days on market to uh, put your house on the market, get it in contract on average and move forward. Um, so that has doubled in the last year. So inventory is up, days on market is up. People are asking more for their properties, but still getting the same as they were a year ago. All right, so I got an email from NAR that talked about uh, why today is not like 2008. A lot of people out there are hearing things that are indicating that there's going to be a foreclosure boom there's going to be a lot of opportunities um, and cheap properties and listings uh, are going to be um, discounted and, and whatnot a lot of the information out there isn't pointing towards that at least that i'm paying attention to and it's easy to fall into that trap we don't know we don't have a crystal ball um, there's so many things that go into what's going to happen 
just like anything else, it's hard to predict the future. Um, but the five reasons that AR came out with, uh, one was the um, labor market is strong, so people have jobs, they have money to spend on a house. Two, uh, the loan types out there are a lot less risky than they were back in 2005, 6, 7, and 8, leading up to the reset, Great Recession. Um, underbuilding and low inventory. Obviously, that means bigger inventory, bigger, or sorry, bigger demand for the inventory that's there, and we're not building enough houses to keep up with that. Um, delinquencies are low, so not a whole lot of people behind on their mortgages, is, and that's leading to number five, um, a ultra low, according to them, foreclosure rate. Also, the other two things that I think are pretty fascinating um, and impressive, one, um, I looked when I did the podcast a couple uh, last week. Um, Thirty-seven percent of U.S. Uh, households do not have a mortgage, so there's a lot of people out there that don't have a mortgage. And about a year ago, last I heard this information, um, the average equity uh, across the country was about 170 some thousand dollars that people have equity in their house. So about half equity in their house. So people are in really good situations, and. Um, it's hard to foreclose on too many people when a lot of people are in good positions, either don't have mortgages or have a good equity position in their mortgage. Um, so good reasons why it's not like 2008. All right. Next, I would like to pull up some slides um, from Keeping Current Matters, one of my big resources I get my real estate information from. <clears throat> Just going to run through the ones here that I thought were interesting um, from Keeping Current Matters. About 11,000 houses sell every day, which breaks down to um, eight houses every minute across the country sell. Um, so going back to a slowdown in the economy, or sorry, the housing market, there's still eight houses closing every minute. Um, still projected to have, last I saw, was 5.1 million houses sell in 2023. Um, 22 had 5.8, I believe was the number. Active listings has gone up. Uh, let's see, 21 was 445,000, and last year was 751,000. So that's quite a difference uh, across the country to look look at uh, bigger numbers than just ours. Um, and I thought this was an interesting one. I'd like your opinion. So comment down below if you agree with this or disagree with this. Um, David Stevens, former Assistant Secretary of Housing said so be advised this may be the one and only window for the next few years to get into a buyer's market and remember as the federal reserve data shows home prices only go up and always recover from recessions no matter how mild or severe long-term homeowners should view this market right now as a unique buying opportunity um this is coming from the fact that interest rates are at their low since mid-November um, of 22. Currently at today as uh, Monday, January 16th, when I'm recording this, uh, interest rates are at 6.09. Consumer price index and a lot of other information out there. If you watch the podcast, I had a lender on um, recently that was well-versed in these uh, factors and spoke to them well, so I won't go through them again. If you want to watch them, go over there. A lot of good information coming out that's showing that mortgage rates are probably going to slow and continue to uh, slow as they have um, and get better. And a lot of indications are that the market is probably going to kick back up another three to six months, three to four months. Uh, who knows what it's going to be. But anyway, um, now's a good opportunity. There's more on the market. We're seeing price reductions. Um all right, so home price forecasting for 23 by source uh, is this slide. Um, anywhere from 5% to negative uh, 5%, coming out to an average of 0.1% appreciate or pricing for this coming year. Lawrence Yoon, with the chief economist at NAR, said uh, the upcoming months should see a return of buyers as mortgage rates appear to have already peaked and have been coming down since mid-November, just like I said. Um, so I am definitely seeing a return of buyers and the lender I spoke with on the podcast said that they're seeing a lot of buyers that kind of disappeared for a little while coming back in the market. Uh, land, lending standards are still under control. Um, as you can see, prior to the housing bubble burst, um, 
the mortgage credit availability index has drastically dropped since then and is remaining low. Mortgage rates projected to keep going down, like I said. Um, so mortgage rates are good now. Pricing is going down, but pricing is predicted to go up, if you ask me. Um, and then here's another slide on mortgage rate projections by quarter. Uh, pending listing count, obviously, um, has gone down, like I said prior. In our market, it definitely has. I think it was 50... Yeah, 47% year over year. And according to this, it's 36% nationally. So we're a little slower than everybody else. Okay, guys. So that's half the story. That's the stats and facts and some of my opinions of where things are going to go. To kind of sum things up, in my opinion, um, rates are down right now from a mortgage standpoint. Things have shifted for sure. Uh, more inventory less activity going on. So we're going to see prices continue to come down um, a little bit right now. Um, but I think there's a good chance that back in the spring, things are going to kick back up and get a little more competitive. So as speaking right now, I think it's a good opportunity. Um, I don't see what shoe is going to drop right now um, to make a big adjustment in prices and have uh, prices go down significantly when it comes to real estate. Um, so like normal, I uh, don't have a crystal ball, um, but I definitely do know that a long-term investment um, in real estate is a positive one. Um, you're hard pressed to find a five-year period in real estate or in history that uh, real estate didn't appreciate. Um, and you need a roof over your head, so why not own it? So if you're hesitant about getting into the market, now's a great time if your finances are in order. If you wanna make a move, um, it's kind of a case by case basis, depending on what you're looking to do. Um, what your current situation from a housing standpoint is and what you're looking to do. Obviously, I'm always open to answer questions about those things if you want some more <clears throat> personalized information. Um, but that's half the story. The other half of the story is what are you he what are you hearing out there um, and what are you experiencing? I would love for you to comment down below or above wherever you're watching this um, to comment with your opinion maybe or uh, more importantly, what's been your experience if you've recently been through a transaction, a real estate transaction or if you you know people and you've talked to them at work, your friends, your family, whoever it might be. It's always good to get uh, on the ground data to see what else uh, people are experiencing in different parts of the country or just different parts of my own community. If you'd like some more information, you can click and find the uh, previous market updates. There might be some more information in there you might learn from. If you like some other real estate related resources, I've got a few of those linked in here or you can sign up for my newsletter and I've got resources that I send out through that. Um, I'll have links down in the description. My favorite one is HomeBot. It's a great resource for homeowners to help manage their uh, the equity in their home, what they might be able to do if they pulled that equity out and refinanced or got a HELOC or just what that investment would look like in the stock market or different things. It helps keep you up to date on mortgage rates and what's going on there if you need to refinance or want to. Um, and then they've come out with a new feature that's really awesome for buyers. Um, there's a great opportunity to get a Chrome extension. You can search through HomeBot's actual site or you can do a Chrome extension that will allow you to put in your information of your current house or how long you plan to stay in this house, different factors that will allow you to customize your search and it'll help tell you if it's a good buy or a bad buy depending on how long you want to stay there, what kind of moving situation you're in, whatever that might be. So that's a favorite one of mine. Uh, take a look at the link down below. Um, and whatever I can do to help, uh, I'm here to help you love where you live. So until then, take care.